Welcome to U Central Sports. I'm Brady Gray. And I'm Jackson Rowbottom. UCO men's basketball has been on a tear lately, but couldn't keep their undefeated streak at home. UCO's Ray Robinson breaks down what happened. You definitely got your money's worth if you saw this game. Them threes wasn't falling for either team, as both teams shot 26% from three. It became a battle of fast breaks, second chance points, points in the paint, and even points from turnovers, which all eventually added up against our fellow Broncos. UCO had four players scoring the double digits with both Kalen Hayden and Cam Gibbons leading the way at both 16 points apiece. Both teams equally led the game, UCO having the biggest lead in the game with exactly 14 points in the first quarter. It's safe to say that both teams were equally matched over the course of the game. However, it ended with a 68-71 victory on Missouri and a nail-biter three-point attempt from our fellow Bronco. The Broncos prepare to take on Newman University Saturday, February 12th in Wichita. Our next UCO home game will be on Wednesday, February 23rd, against another Missouri team, which is Missouri Central State. Tip-off is at 7.30. Hope to see you guys there. Brady? Thank you, thank you, Ray. And the women's team took on Missouri Western. Jaden Ford has that breakdown. We're going to cut over to Jaden. The University of Central Oklahoma women's basketball team fell short 93-88 to the Missouri Western Griffins this past Saturday. Forward Kelsey Johnson led the Broncos in scoring with 18 points on 16-23 shooting, which is the second most points scored in history. Guards Aliyah Lensua combined for 38 points, which, combined, which helped cut into the Missouri Western League. That was held most of this game. Central did fight back in the second half, scoring 26 points in the third and fourth quarters, cutting the lead to as low as three. Missouri Western played a great offensive game. When you have six players score 10 or more points, it's hard to lose this game. This past Wednesday, the ladies hit the road to play in Poirier State, winning a close one, 74 to 71. UCO takes the court again this Saturday against Washburn at 1 p.m. And the state championships of Oklahoma high school basketball are about a month away. We'll have to wait until tomorrow for the final rankings and brackets, but we have a good idea of who we'll see in men's basketball. Booker T. Washington is 17-1 with the number one school in the state. Memorial is 19-1 at second, and Carl Alberts is third despite being just 16-4. Booker T. will come in with a target on their back, not only for being the number one team, but because they have the number one player in the state with Aaron Potter. Norman North is expected to outplay their 12-6 record with the help of second best player in Oklahoma, Kevin Overton. For the girls, 18-0 Edmund North leads the pack with the number one ranking. Class and SIS is second at 16-1, and Tuttle is third at 17-1. Classen has the number one player in the state with Dariana Little Page Bugs. 15-4 Mustang has the number two player with Carly Johnson, while 14-5 Norman has the third and fourth best players, Michaela Parks and Micah Perry. Talk about a duo. State begins March 1st with classes A, B, A and B, and then 2A and 4A will start Monday, or will start March 8th, rather, excuse me, and 5A through 6A on March 10th. The games will be played at Maybe Center at Oral Roberts University. That's all we have in the first block. Here on the other side, Brindley Lenahan has wrestling. Stay tuned. UCO Wrestling has had a historic season this year, and UCO's Brindley Lenahan talked to the team and told us their secret to success. Brindley? My double A. Starting in early January, when the Broncos won 19-14 over the four-time reigning champion St. Cloud State Huskies, who had won a record of 77 straight matches. 
This allowed the Broncos to move to 7-0 with their 13th consecutive win. Hunter Jump was the star of these duels as he clinched a perfect 4-0 performance in the tournament, which landed him 17-3 for the season. Not only did Jump help secure the title for the Broncos, he also snagged the MIAA Wrestler of the Week for his outstanding performance at the National Duels, stating, It was a great accomplishment for me, but also for my team. The Broncos continue to persevere, especially in their duels against Adam State, where they trailed 12-9 after losing three straight matches in the middle of the duel. Nonetheless, they came out on top, finishing 29-12. You can catch the Broncos in person this Sunday, February 13th at 2 p.m. in Hamilton Fieldhouse. That's all we have on wrestling. Brady Jackson, back to you. Softball is underway at UCO, but before U Central season, Devin Bajek talked to senior infielder Taryn Dubler about what their expectations were this season. The UCO softball team kicks off the season February 3rd at the Arkansas Tech Invitational. After a 36-14 season a year ago, this year's team has a new set of goals. So some of our team goals are um, being conference champs and making a good run in postseason. A new year means a new team identity for the Chos. We have more leadership. We've had a lot of younger girls come in and step up and fill a lot of roles. Um, and I think that we also have a consistency. The level of excitement for this team to get back on the diamond is visible. I'm just excited to get out there and get going. We've been practicing. We've been going really hard every day. Um, we've had little off days, but that's okay because we've been out here getting better. And um, I'm just ready to see us all together on the field um, as one playing together instead of competing against one another. One another. I think that um, it's going to be an exciting year. The road will be tough to the brutal in my double A, but the team wouldn't have it any other way. As you see in our conference, you take it day by day, and everyone has a chance to win, and so you just got to keep going and um, keep fighting, and no play is going to be easy. From Edmond, Oklahoma, this is Devin Bajek, U Central News. The UCO softball team actually opened their season last weekend at the Arkansas Tech Invitational. They opened with a matchup against Texas Women's University and won by a score of 12-4. Shaley Odom led the way as she went two for four with five RBIs, and Kylie Lynch got the start in the circle as she went four innings and struck out three batters. The Broncos would go on to split two of their other two games at the Invitational with, eight of, with an eight to nine loss against St. Mary's and a three to two win over Southern Arkansas. The Broncos are in town this week hosting the UCO, UCO Festival where they will have a matchup versus Midwestern State tomorrow at 4.30 4 p.m. They will follow that up with a game against SNU at 5.15 p.m. And on Saturday and on Sunday, the Broncos will face Cameron University at 3 p.m. That's right. Bronco baseball is heading to Colorado for a three-game stretch against MSU Denver. Their game against Southern Nazarene was supposed to be there, was supposed to be their game slated for February 9th, but was postponed. Edmond finished strong in their three-game opening stretch for the Edmond First Pitch Classic at two wins and one loss, giving them positive vibes for the long season to come. First game against MSU Denver is slated for tomorrow, February 11th at 2 p.m. And UCO is up and running this semester with their first tournament in sight, and the team is itching to get started before going to Houston to put their opening bid for the spring season. Preparations for UCO golf are underway as their first tournament of the season looms around the corner. They're coming off of a fine fall that saw them with a first place and third place finish in their last two starts with a new head coach at the helm who says that he likes what he sees out of his squad and that the chemistry there is something really special. So uh, what I was blessed with here is a group, uh, group of great guys. Um, they, they're great teammates. They work well together. Uh, they're very coachable. And, and so it's, it's been a, a pretty, pretty clean start for us. UCO's first test of the season will take place at the Golf Club of Houston, famed for its play of the Houston Open on the PGA Tour in years past. A veteran golfer Evan Griffiths has some experience on the course and said that there are some things that they need to look for and that it should be a very tough test of golf. It's a tough course, ball striking off the tee wise, um, and it's also a tough putting course. Um, luckily, I feel like we're a really good team off the tee, um, and then I also feel like we're really good around the greens as well. So I feel like if we can just keep it in play, uh, minimize our uh, losing strokes to penalties or lost balls or anything like that, I think we've got a really good chance coming up. Awesome, Evan. Thank you very much for your time. Thank, Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. If there was a concern for the team for this season, it might be the experience and the fact that there's no seniors on the team this year. But the coach doesn't seem to think so. 
and that the team's experience and overall play is something that'll carry them. Once you get a group of, really any group of college golfers, their ability to play the game, their skill level is extremely high. Um, and so you've got to kind of find ways to separate yourselves from other players, other teams in the event. And so what we really focus on a lot is, is strategy, course management, um, kind of understanding expectations of certain shots and, and when can you expect to score, um, you know, when can you, I don't want to say playing defense necessarily, but there's just situations that are not great on a golf course and that's okay. From Edmond, Oklahoma, I'm Jackson Robottom, U Central Sports. The show women's rowing team made quite the splash last year by claiming the 2021 Division II Women's Rowing Championships. This came as no surprise considering they won the same title in 2019 and 18. The women's rowing team will compete against the University of Tulsa for their first race of the 2022 season on Saturday, February 26th. Yes, and the UCO men's hockey team as well prepares to close out their season against the University of Oklahoma next weekend. The doubleheader will be next Friday, February 18th, and Saturday, February 19th. Last week's game against McKendree University was canceled due to the winter storm and has yet to be rescheduled. On the other side, we've got a little look into the insides of baseball, the update on the Thunder, and a little Super Bowl talk. Stay tuned. With an update on the Oklahoma City Thunder season so far, U Central's Kiwan Neal. Kiwan? To none of our surprises, the OKC Thunder are off to a rough start this year. They're currently sitting at 17 and 35 on the season and are second to last in the West. So far this month, they're two and three in their last five games. They'll look to snap a three game losing streak with their next matchup against the new look 76ers who just traded for James Harden. They'll look to rookie sensation Josh Giddy and Lou Dort to get the team back in the win column. I'm Kiwan Neal, and that's your weekly Thunder update. That's right, and for those of you who don't know my partner, Brady Gray, he thinks that he can take on anyone at any sport, anytime, oh, and going anywhere. Here, are we? And he put in a bid to take on a host of UCO's best athletes and compete against them at their own sports. And this week, he went to the baseball diamond for his first challenge with pride and ego at stake. Here's how it went down. My name is Brady Gray, and this is Joe's vs. Shows, the show where an average college student gets to go head-to-head -head with UCO athletes. On this episode, I went down to Wendell Simmons Field to take on some of the guys on the baseball team. I met up with UCO shortstop Jaden Parsons, and he wanted to see if he could strike me out. He told me he pitched a little in high school, but he's just a shortstop. How hard could it really be? He told me I had five at-bats to get a hit, and not just making contact, I got to hit a gap or a corner where the defense couldn't get it in the outfield. UCO catcher Wyatt Gray is going to be behind the dish playing umpire. Hopefully he calls fair. With my luck, he definitely won't. Regardless, let's do this. Are you going to handle it? Find out. Oh, really? Rolled out on the first one, but they can't all be home runs. Regardless, it's a, it's a good start. 
My second at bat didn't start too bad. But it ended pretty poorly. It was that good. Now that my pride and spirit were broken, I think it was time to actually make some contact. At bet number three, started with a little bit of gamesmanship on my part. Mind game. Mind game. I like the top shelf. Three at bats down, but still got two left. Two of fives in all American percentage, so don't count me out just yet. Too close to left field to hit a gap, but not far enough in the corner to get away from the defense. One at bat left. Great. dominance had been established, it was time to actually let it rip. Down to my last out, my last strike, and last bit of manhood, I had to come up with something special. And that's when this happened. He's in the gap! He's in the gap! Let's go! Right center field gap shot that rolled all the way to the wall. That's all it took for me to feel like I'd won. Boy, did I feel. How'd I do? I'm not impressed. Only because you're facing a shortstop that doesn't pitch. What do you say, pitcher? You know what? He laid off some good pitches. Pretty dang good effort. I, I call that 1-0 and oh so far. So, all seriousness, thanks, guys. This yeah, was a blast. This has been Joe's vs. Joe's. I'm Brady Gray. I'd say I'd say it went well. But, uh, you big think week so? I do. But big weekend this weekend, Super Bowl. Rams, Bengals, what's your feel on it? I'm thinking it could be a close game. I think the Rams could run away with it, and I think the Bengals could win in a close one. I want to see the Bengals win. I love. I do too. Joe, Joe Burrow. Burrow, Chase, Nixon, all of them. It's a great day. Absolutely. And for everyone behind the scenes and here at the desk, I'm Brady Gray. And I'm Jackson Robottom. Have a great night, guys.